Hi, I'm Dr. Gary Richter, and I thought it'd be good today to talk about why so many pets are overweight and what we can do about it. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, just like is the case with people, um, uh, obesity is a problem uh, in the pet population, um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, most, if not all, of which we can do something about, which is which is really great news. Uh, not surprisingly, uh, you know, the first consideration as it pertains to uh, pets and being overweight is, is food. Um, and that is really both a question of what they're eating and how much of it they're eating. Uh, as far as what they're eating goes, uh, you know, there are a lot of different options as far as pet foods go. There's dry food, canned food, there's fresh foods. Um, one of the things that we sometimes see uh, with dogs eating dry food in particular is that dry food or kibble uh, is very, very high in carbohydrates. Uh, and as such, sometimes that will, that will lead to weight gain in dogs. Uh, so, uh, you know, for some of these guys, getting them off these high carbohydrate foods and getting them onto foods that are more sort of concentrated with protein and fat as opposed to carbs, uh, can be really beneficial. Uh, it's not all that different from a person in so much as, uh, as a person, if you have weight to lose and you take the carbohydrates out of your diet, frequently you're gonna lose some weight. And the same is, the same is true um, for our pets. The great news as it pertains to dogs is, is they don't tend to crave carbohydrates like we do. Um, they're usually quite happy eating protein and fat. Um, so, um, so in some ways it's actually kind of an easier thing uh, to manage. Uh, and then, of course, the other thing as it pertains to food is really just how much they're eating. You know, how much they're eating is going to, you know, whether or not that's appropriate is going to hinge on both their, you know, their breed, their metabolism, their activity level, uh, you know, a, a variety of different things. Uh, but, you know, as you might imagine, a dog that is more active, that is, you know, that is going out for a three-hour walk every day is going to burn more calories than one that that is spending most of their day in the house. So, you know, these things have to be taken into account. So, you know, you might be feeding the recommended amount of food on the package that, uh, of, of dog food that you're buying, but that's really just a guideline. Um, and, if, and if the dog is heavy on that amount of food, it may be that you just need to cut back um, and feed a little bit less. Um, you know, in addition to that, there is the question of what goes on um, between meals. So snacks, treats, these sorts of things, you know, realize that just like with people, all that stuff adds up. And when you're talking about a dog, you know, 10 or 20 calories per day extra in snacks can really add up over time. Uh, so, you know, it's important to sort of count all that stuff in. If you, if you feel like you need to cut back um, what your, the amount that your dog is eating, you know, one good strategy to do that would be, you know, you know take 10 or 20 percent of their food away, but um, if they'll have it, what you can do is you can add that amount or even more than that amount in like chopped vegetables, carrots, broccoli, what have you. So, and that can be either cooked or raw, depending on what, what your dog prefers. Uh, and the reason why that's helpful is because it's, 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 it's filler, if you will. So they feel full. So they're, 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 they're eating and they feel full. So they're not, they're not, you know, coming after you because, because they're starving to death or so they think. Um, you know, while they're still getting less calories. So that, um, that can really be uh, a very beneficial way to kind of help mitigate the weight loss. Um, other issues uh, as far as reasons why, you know, dogs may be overweight, it could be just a function of exercise. You know, I mean, you know, as people, we, we tend to be really busy. Uh, we often don't exercise enough ourselves. And, and as such, you know, our dogs may not get out as much either. Uh, you know, it's, it, again, it somewhat depends on the, the breed of the dog, how much exercise that they need, but all dogs need exercise. Um, so, I mean, it, you know, if, if, if a dog is spending 23 hours a day inside the house and just, you know, getting out for a brief walk to pee and poo, they're, they're just not getting enough exercise. So, you know, the, the solution to that would be, you know, if it's possible in, in, in your life to get them out for longer, that would be great. Um, alternatively, um, you know, there's dog walking services. Um, they, can go to, they can go to daycare maybe a few days a week and run around with other dogs and, and get some exercise. And, and you know, even just, just emotionally and spiritually, that's really helpful for them as well to get that kind of, to get that kind of stimulus and input. Uh, so, you know, I think that's a, that's a big plus one way or the other. Um, you know, lastly, as it pertains to reasons why dogs may be overweight, um, we can't completely discount uh, medical issues. 
Uh, those sorts of things can occur. Dogs can have uh, low-functioning thyroid, so uh, you know, hypothyroidism, which can cause weight gain in a dog. There's a couple of other diseases. There's one called Cushing's disease, which can sometimes cause a dog to, to gain weight as well. So if you feel like your dog is heavy and they're getting decent exercise and they don't seem like they're eating too much food, that's actually a good time to have a conversation with your veterinarian because it may be that some blood tests could help illuminate whether or not there is um, whether or not there's a medical problem. So the other thing that I just would like to talk about is is how do you actually tell from looking if your dog is if your dog is overweight and and there are really a number of ways to do this with the understanding that there's going to be pretty wide variation from from breeds so you know for example if you own a greyhound um you know versus say something like a mastiff you know you're you're gonna it's going to be a bit of a different a bit of a different measurement but but on the whole here's a couple of good tips that you can use uh to to know where your dog is it's sort of in the in the in the weight range uh so number one um pass your hands over their rib cage on the side um, and with, with just applying just a little bit of pressure, you should be able to feel some definition of their ribs. Um, if you have to press in significantly to kind of feel a rib because they're super soft on the sides, they're, they're probably a little on the heavy side. Conversely, if they're super bumpy, um, then they may actually be a little bit underweight. Uh, similarly, if you pass your hand over their back, over their spine, uh, you should be able to feel a little bit of definition in their spine um, if you have to press in to feel that definition, then again, they might be a little on the heavy side. Uh, you know, if you look at your dog sort of from the top down, you should be able to see what, what we would call a waist, meaning that their, you know, that their chest uh, is wider than, than sort of the width of their abdominal area. And similarly, if you look at them from the side, uh, you know, you would expect them to have kind of a, kind of a tuck after their, after their chest. Um, you know, things kind of move upwards a little bit uh, into where their abdomen is. Now, again, for example, if you have a Mastiff, you may or may not see that because those dogs are just built that way. So you have to take that into account as to what sort of breed of dog you have. But those are, you know, those are good general pointers for most dogs to get an idea of whether or not you feel like they're overweight, underweight, or right about where they should be. Uh, you know, and the last thing that I would say to that regards is if you're not sure, have that conversation with your veterinarian. They will very easily be able to have a look and have a feel and let you know, uh, you know, what's going on there. Because, you know, because obesity in dogs can lead to a, a you know, a pretty long list of potential health problems. Um, probably the biggest one of which is orthopedic in nature. Um, you know, they can wind up with hip pain, elbow pain, back related issues, things that legitimately will affect their quality of life and in many cases shorten their, their life um, because it's not that uncommon to see larger breed dogs as they get older have very, very serious quality of life issues that sometimes come to, the, to a discussion of euthanasia purely because they're so orthopedically broken down that they just can't get up and move around anymore. Uh, you know, so keeping them an appropriate weight really, really is, a, it's, it's more than an aesthetics uh, kind of issue. It's really important. The good news is, is that dogs don't get coronary, uh, coronary artery disease like people do. They don't have heart attacks, so at least that's something that we don't really have to worry about. Um, but certainly, um, you know, as far as their overall health, their, uh, their overall level of inflammation, and in general, they, you know, as far as their mobility goes, keeping them at an optimal weight is really, really important towards keeping them healthy. Uh, so I hope that that is a, uh, a good overview of, of why it's important to keep your dog at an optimal weight and how to get them there. Um, and uh, I hope that works out great for you.